Well, praise the Lord and good evening and welcome to our Sunday night service and just thanking God you're here. And uh, it is a very hot day today. It, it, the temperature outside has gotten really warm, so I pray that you're drinking lots of fluids and staying warm, or uh, staying cool. <laughs> and staying warm won't be a problem. Staying cool and, uh, you know, getting out of the heat because it, uh, it's very warm outside. Well, tonight, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you for this evening. We thank you and praise you for this opportunity for us to gather together and to dig into your word tonight. Lord, we just pray that you would uh, just lead and guide and direct. Pray also, Lord, that you'd keep everyone safe from this heat. Um, help them to uh, stay cool and uh, out of danger. We just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, over the uh, today and tomorrow, it's supposed to be a very warm day, so make sure that you're drinking lots of fluids and in try to stay out of that heat as much as possible. Well, tonight we're going to be looking, uh, continuing through Jude. Uh, we're in the book of Jude, and tonight we're going to be taking a good look at verses 18 and 19. Uh, we're going to dig into these verses and just uh, see a little bit about what the Lord has uh, got to say. So, uh, let's read. Um, well, let's back it up to 17, that way we can run through um, 18 and 19 and more in context. But beloved, remember the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. But ye beloved, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So what, tonight we're going to look at this, and the apostles were warning, and the, the Lord was warning us, and uh, we're going to see uh, what they're talking about here. Verse 18, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who would walk after their own ungodly lusts. Now, we know today that uh, we see that. We see that uh, quite a bit where people are, are uh, mocking Christianity. We see quite a bit of that actually happening. Hollywood does it a lot in their movies, in their television shows, their productions, even music, music videos, things of that nature, uh, make a mockery of Christianity, trying to, um, you know, mock and insult Christians, insult the Lord. Uh, this is what, uh, you know, Hollywood and the music industry have been doing quite a bit of. So, uh, there's no shock, no surprise, nothing that we're just like, oh, I just can't believe they're doing that. Well, yeah, they're doing that. Uh, not too many years ago, they had a Super Bowl, and during the Super Bowl, the halftime show basically was a uh, Wiccan ceremony that they did during the Super Bowl, as and they portrayed it as a music video, but it was definitely a satanic, uh, you know, worship service, and you know, satanic, you know, and it's just unbelievable how uh, today people have gotten so far away from the Scripture in this nation. And, uh, of course, the world is making a mockery of that. This is why compromising with, you know, compromising with the enemy, with Satan, doesn't ever work. You know, Christians just need to stick to the Word of God. You know that uh, compromising with it, saying, oh, well, we'll just allow this, and we'll just allow that. Well, if you, you allow one inch, Satan takes, you know, a mile. That's what he does. You know, he's not going to just, you know, be satisfied with just a little crack in the door. He's going to bust the door wide open and come right in. That's what he does. This is why you can't allow in your life. You can't do that. You can't compromise with the enemy, you know, with Satan. It does not work. <clears throat> now, let's go over to Acts chapter 20. Let's go to Acts chapter 20. Praise the Lord. Pray that you guys are doing well. Amen. God is good. Okay, Acts chapter 20. I hope that the fan I have on here is not making too much noise in the background, but it's really warm. Okay, so Acts chapter 20, verse 29. Paul is talking. Actually, let's re back it up to verse 28, and we'll read down a little bit. Um, Take heed therefore unto yourselves, and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. It would be good for us to remember that Christ Jesus purchased the church with his own blood. If pastors would remember the cost 
and remember that he has charged pastors with protecting and overseeing and keeping them safe, um, you know, maybe pastors would be uh, doing a lot better job. But, you know, unfortunately today, a lot of pastors are not. They're compromising with Satan. They're allowing all kinds of, uh, you know, craziness in there. And they're not preaching against sin. They're not preaching against, um, they're not, they're not warning anymore. Mm -hmm. They're just mm -hmm. telling everybody that they're okay. I'm okay. You're okay. Everybody's okay. Well, we're not all okay. We have a big problem. That problem's called sin. And if you let sin go, it will kill you because the wages of sin is death. Okay, let's continue on. Verse 29. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. You know, this is what Paul was warning, that as soon as he was dead, that he said grievous wolves would enter in. Now, he wasn't talking about physical wolves that were coming down out of the mountains and, and to, you know, attacking people. He was talking about um, preachers, pastors that had not... Christ's interests in mind. They had their own selfish interests, their own lusts. They were being led by those things, and they were leading people astray. We see it today in cults like Jim Jones, David Koresh, and others that have decided to uh, preach a false gospel, a false, you know, uh, a false Christ, and they lead people away. Even uh, let's see somebody who did that was uh, let's see the founder of, of Mormonism. He did that, you know. He. He came in with a false price, and people followed that. And before you know it, you have a whole bunch of people running around uh, thinking they're going to have spirit babies and ruling planets, and, and that's not what God says in his word at all. Uh, the Book of Mormon is, is nothing but a lie from the pit of hell. And uh, anybody that puts faith and trust in that is going to be seriously disappointed when they stand before the Lord because uh, there is only one way to salvation, and that's through Jesus Christ. You can only come in through the door. That means you got to go according to God's way. And God's way is described in his book, the Bible, not the Book of Mormon, you know, not in some twisted version that's sitting out there in somebody's bookshelf that they twisted the word to make it fit their, their lifestyle or their agenda. No, you need to stick with the Holy Word of God as it is written and, and don't depart from that. Don't compromise. Just, you know, if you don't like what God said, then you need to change. God's not going to. Okay, also verse 30. He says, Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one, night and day with tears. You know, God, God sends people to warn you. You know, he sent the Apostle Paul to warn us. He sent him and the other apostles to, to warn us, to give us the scripture, to, to warn us to, to stay in the fear of the Lord, to stay with obedience to God's word. And today, people have gone away from that. They think that they can do whatever they want to do because they're under grace. They can live any way they want to live because they're under grace. They can live like, they can live like they've never experienced salvation at all during the week. You couldn't tell the difference between them and somebody who never met Jesus. And then on Sunday morning, man, they're sitting there with their, their suit on, all looking, you know, looking like the holiest thing that's ever hit the street. And then the next day, they're right back to, you know, partying and up and nightclubbing and drinking and doing everything else the world's doing. Well, it doesn't work like that. The Bible said God's not mocked. Whatever man sows, that will he also reap. So, you know, the only person you deceive in, in those things, well, first of all, you start with yourself but sadly as you as these people are in Paul's talking about preachers that you know come up and teachers that come up they sadly deceive others into following their ungodly lifestyle now you see um, you see a lot of that today and it's it's just sad it's sad get back to the Bible you know shut the door on the wolves get back to the scriptures first Timothy chapter 4 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, and having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You know, this is the, this is the source 
of false doctrine. This is the force, uh, the, the, the source of, the source of it is of all false teaching, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. You know, this is where Satan engineers um, plans and strategies. He, he does this in his, in his campaign against God, against mankind. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he does. And he comes up with all kinds of lying um, doctrine, teaching, to lead you astray. And if you're not grounded in God's word, the Bible, if you're not grounded in the word of God, well, when this false teaching is introduced to you, it's going to sound okay. It's going to sound right. Maybe there's even a verse quoted. Maybe he even quotes one verse. But it won't be in context. And it won't be what God intended as the usage of that verse. You see, that's what Satan does, is he twists the word. You know, deception that the enemy comes to comes against you with is not something that's going to come out as blatantly wrong although sometimes things are blatantly wrong but he comes out as something with something that's almost right it's almost right it's very close but it's still wrong you know it's like a drink you know a cool drink of water on today would be great you know if we had a, a bottle of water right here and, and you know cool drink of water is perfect but if there was one drop of cyanide in this, it would kill me, right? Even just one drop in comparison to all of this good water, one drop is deadly. And that's false teaching today. False teaching will look almost like the, the right thing, but there'll be a problem. And that problem is deception. You know, um, and deception Satan uses will, will kill you. That's what he. That's what he does. That's what he. He's an expert in leading people astray. This is why Jesus said, "My sheep know my voice." Right? You got to know the voice of the Lord. And, don't, and I'm not talking about an audible voice that you're hearing out here somewhere. I'm talking his voice reflected in his word. You know what he has to say. You know in your spirit, in your heart, you're gonna know that you build, put this word in your heart that you don't sin against God. You're walking in the fear of the Lord. As somebody comes up and says something, you're going to pick it out. You know? I'll give you an example. This is an example. Let's see if you can pick out the problem. Okay? Um, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. Is the problem? Of course there is. A. The word A. That's what's in the Jehovah Witness Bible. And it's definitely not in your King James Bible. It says, in the beginning was the Word... And the word was with God, and the word was God, not was a God. A God would fall would is a modification that they use in the Jehovah Witness Bible, and uh, it's a twisting of the word. It makes a difference. One letter. No, nope. there's one God. One God. He's reflected in three persons: the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There's one God. In the beginning, he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We see that in, when Jesus is baptized. He goes down into the water, comes up. The Holy Spirit comes down in the shape of the dove. The Father speaks from heaven. This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. So you have to understand. You see the, you see the Trinity reflected in there. But it doesn't say in the scripture, was a God. Was God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. It's so important for you to read, because one letter, you know, one letter makes a difference. Changes the whole context. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power of thereof from such turn away. And, and if you've been in following our uh, Friday night Biblical Foundations class, you'll be familiar with this scripture because we did use this in our Biblical Foundation, Foundations class um, as a uh, talking about the last things, the last times. But we see this as accurate here with, with the book of Jude. We see this as very accurate as giving a reflection of, of you know, men being 
how they man, in the attitude, the spiritual attitude of these people in these last days are scoffers, you know, not believing God, not walking in the fear of the Lord. They don't have the fear of the Lord. If they did have the fear of the Lord, they wouldn't be doing these things. They would be too afraid to do this, you know, to do these things. But they're not walking in that. You know, they're not walking in the fear of the Lord. They're not using, exercising any wisdom. To continue in sin in this generation, this time of history of the planet, to continue in sin right now is, is absolute foolishness. Why? Because we're at the very end. And this is not the time for the church to be asleep, and it's certainly not the time for the world to put off getting right with God till tomorrow, next week, next year. You may not have it. You may not have that time. See, we don't know what's happening in the world today, uh, but things happen very quickly. We know that. And in our own personal lives, we age very quickly, more uh, faster than we want to, and sometimes faster than we expected to. And so you don't have the luxury of putting off to tomorrow because you may not get there. There may not be a tomorrow for you. Today might be it. And as a Christian, if you're living for the Lord, you should have that always in mind that that I need at any time to be ready to meet the Lord and if people don't know Jesus let me just tell you uh, you don't you don't have a guarantee of tomorrow to turn to him you got today right now if you're breathing and you're hearing right now this message this is your opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ this is your opportunity to repent of sin and trust Jesus and if you haven't been living right this is also your opportunity to turn from that Turn from it now. What do you? Why would you hold on to something that will destroy you? Why do that? It makes no sense. Second Timothy chapter three verse thirteen. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. This is what the Bible tells us is going to happen. Evil men, they're going to. Um, evil men and seducers, they're going to get worse and worse. And they're going to deceive, and they're going to be, be be deceived. And we see this. Society is not getting better, getting worse. Why? We're close. We're close. We're close to the time where God's going to wrap all this up. Do you remember, um, by chance, do you remember um, when we look back at right before the flood, the attitude of the people of the, on the planet? God says that the, the thoughts of their heart was only evil continually. It was only evil continually. That's all they ever thought about was evil. That's it. Today we have a very self-absorbed society. Everybody's out there concerned with themselves. Selfies, right? Uh, a product of this self love generation and the bible tells us the last days men will be lovers of their own selves i mean it, you see this again and again and again pride and arrogance um anger and hatred murder and destruction you see these things over and over you know this anarchist uh, thing that's going on right now these these groups that are are propagating anarchy and rioting and stuff listen it's only going to get worse that's what the scripture tells us. That these evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse. Now, evil men is what we've been talking a lot about. Seducers are these ones that, that bring in false doctrines, false teachings, and things like that. So these seducers will also, the Bible says, evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse. So, so even in deception, it's going to get worse. And so how do you insulate yourself against that, guys? You know the answer already if you've been listening at any time. You need to get in the Bible. You need to be in the Bible every day. That's how you insulate yourself against all of this stuff that's happening. Are you still here? Yes, you're still here. Were the uh, were the Jews still in Egypt when the plagues were being unleashed upon Egypt? They were. And society is going to get worse before before the time that God gathers us to himself let me just tell you it's going to get a lot worse the Bible tells about it and so it would be good for you to remember that the Lord said he 
that endures to the end shall be saved. You have to endure. And the only way you're going to endure is to be clinging to the word of Almighty God. Get it built into your heart. Amen. Uh, 2 Timothy 4.3 says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and be turned unto fables. You know, this is the problem today, is when, when preachers are preaching sound doctrine from the Holy Word of God, from the Bible, there's a lot of people who don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear it. They want to hear what's going to make them rich, what's going to make them popular, what's going to make them uh, healthy and, and pain-free. And, uh, you know, they're looking for things that are going to tell them that they're powerful and they're you know, taking over everything. <laughs> and, I mean, these are... These are literal, what I just mentioned are literal teachings and doctrines that are in, in the, the modern church today. But the Lord tells us that we need to endure. That we're our treasures in heaven. Right? That we have a job to do here on this planet. It's to get out there and give the good news of the gospel. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to return to this planet, and He is going to um, rule and reign here. The church is not. The church is not taking over the planet before the Lord returns, and, and we're going to usher in the kingdom. This is That's dominionism. It's a false teaching. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to come back and rescue us from our, ourselves. When He comes back, at the time He comes back, if He didn't return at that moment... If he doesn't return at that moment, the Bible says that there would be no flesh saved. We would have successfully annihilated ourselves. We have the capability today to do it many times over. And yet God is merciful and he restrains our own hands. It's so funny today to think that people think that, well, you know, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Really? Not if it's not God's will. If it's not God's will, you certainly will not do that. Your pride may lift you up and think that you can do whatever you want to do, but God might have other things to say about that. People don't walk in the fear of the Lord anymore like they should. And that's foolish. Because God's not going to change His word. And He certainly will fulfill His word. And He's proven it again and again. But today, people like to have teachers that just tell them everything is good and everything is great and you're going to be so powerful and you're going to be so strong and you're going to do this and you're going to do that and you're just, you're just the best ever and, and th there's no one like you. And, uh, I mean, truthfully, there's elements of truth in some of these things. There's elements of truth. But there's one that we need to be worshiping and his name is Jesus Christ. There's one that we need to be lifting up. There's one that's all powerful. There's one that's almighty. There's one that we can lean on, depend upon and trust him. Amen. You know, is God going to bless you in Christ? Yes, in Christ. In Christ. You know, you're not going to um do anything outside of Christ. Anything that you do is because of your connection to Christ. But he never promised to he never promises all of those things here at this earth. He already told you, lay up your treasures in heaven. You know, he said here on this earth you're gonna suffer what? Tribulation, persecution. That's gonna happen. You're in enemy territory. Right here, this world, right now. You have you have to war against your own flesh. You have to war against the world system the ideology of the world system, which is totally antichrist, and of course against Satan. You're, you're, you, you are in enemy territory. You're an ambassador for Christ, right? An ambassador sent to a foreign country. You no longer belong to this world like that. You belong to Christ. You're an ambassador for Christ in a foreign land. 
that's hostile to you and to the message you bear. It should be good for you to remember that. And our weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty through God for pulling down strongholds, right? We cast them down of imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. God has given you weapons. He's given you armor. He's given you love. Love for him. Love for your neighbor. That's what's going to help you keep going. Even when they oppose you. Even when they persecute you. Even when they kill you. You can still resent the love of God to those that oppose themselves. Yeah. Ask. Look into scripture. Search it out and see. And you'll find this is what happened. What happened to Paul? What happened to Peter? What happened to the rest of the disciples? And John, the only one that wasn't martyred, was exiled to, uh, to the island of Patmos. Think about it. This is not this world right now. This isn't our home. And we're waiting for the Lord to return for us. And he will. But until that day, we need to hang, hang on firm to the end. Look at Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Second Peter 2. Verse 1, but there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who shall privately bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring swift destruction, uh, bring upon themselves swift destruction. I want you to notice something from this, and again, this is another verse that you've seen on our in our Friday night uh, service. But notice this, that there were false prophets among also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who shall privily bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them. So, these people were at one time walking with the Lord. They were, but they're not now. And how many, how many of you have honestly seen this happening? I mean, I've seen this in, in my lifetime. I've seen, I can't even... I can't even count it anymore. How many once um, powerful ministries for the Lord to preach the gospel that were out there giving giving the life changing gospel to people, you know, change. They changed, and instead of giving the gospel message, telling men that, and women that they need to repent of their sins and trust Jesus, now they preach a different message. Preach a message of self love, self care. Self exaltation. They don't tell people to deny themselves, take up their cross and follow him. They just tell people that they'll be healthy and wealthy and prosperous in this life. Everything's going to be good. That's what they tell them on this earth. That they'll never have a problem, never have a have an issue. And, and if there is anything that they're supposed to go and, and rebuke it and take authority over it. You know, you don't really see that in the book of Acts. You know, not too much. I mean, you see, you see an instance where there was uh, the, the lady who had the spirit, you know, the divination, spirit of divination. She was following uh, Paul around and he turned and rebuked the spirit, right, to come, come out of her. Right, and uh, we see that. But what I'm talking about is, is like uh, you see people trying to, trying to. Uh, they have they're being persecuted, so they're rebuking that. They 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 have financial issues, and they're rebuking that. They have their dishwashers broken, and they're rebuking their dishwasher. And you know, I mean, come on, guys. We do live in a fallen world, right? But not everything that's wrong is demonic. There's mankind has caused the majority of these issues that are going on in the world today. We caused them. Because we gave in to our lust as humanity. So, you know, 
you don't need to be flipping over rocks and casting demons out of dishwashers or broken refrigerators or whatever, you know. That's not what God calls you to do. Go preach the gospel. Get in the scripture. Get in the Bible. Read the Bible. Find out what he says and go do it. Okay? I wish that I was using examples that weren't, uh, that hadn't happened, but unfortunately we've got church folks out there doing that. We not in our church, but in churches, called name in the name of Jesus. Be careful. Heresies are out there running rampant. The emergent church is, is absolutely horrible with that. Bethel Church in, Cal in Redding, California is absolutely horrible with this. And there's others. People that get tied up in this false doctrine don't even know what time of day it is because they're, they're so confused. Well, you would be confused if you get away from the scripture, if you get away from the Bible. You're going to be confused. These guys don't even prioritize the Bible in, in what they're doing. They, they give more credence to, um, you know, psychologists than they do to the Bible. Well, you have a big problem if you're doing that. A big problem. And I'm going to tell you right now, pastors... You need to be spending more time in the scriptures and, and not any time uh, down there at, at the bench of, of psychologists who are atheists. Carl Jung and all these guys, atheists. I'm giving you humanistic reason and humanistic ideas. You just need to get to the scripture and find out what God says because God addresses every need of mankind. Every one of them. Can you imagine... Can you imagine a modern-day um, counselor, uh, psychologist person trying to go um, and uh, give their psychological assistance to the uh, the guy that had the demonic spirit that you know uh, that met the Lord at the coast with the legion, right? Can you imagine psychologists trying to analyze him? Well, this must have been a problem with your childhood. You know, I mean, you know how these. These guys are that pick out everything. How about it's just a sin problem that Satan is there, right? In that situation, this man was demon-possessed, and the only one who was on the scene that could take care of that business was Jesus Christ, and he did. The demons were terrified of Jesus. It was, a, it was over, two, well, the pigs, there were 2,000 pigs, and the demons went in there, right? And to these 2,000 pigs and ran down the hillside and, uh, you know, drowned themselves in the water. A whole lot of demons don't even have the exact number. We don't know. The Bible doesn't say the exact number. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. Mm -hmm. And they were terrified of the Lord Jesus Christ. Terrified. Anytime one of these, these demons showed their, their face, the Lord Jesus was there, they were terrified. And yet men blaspheme his name today. I just think that mankind is foolish in a big way. You walk around without the fear of the Lord, that is the epitome of foolishness. Because if even the demons are terrified of God, you're going to walk around in your pride thinking you're something and you're just dirt? Hmm. You might want to chew on that for a minute. Um, 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 3 knowing this that first there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts saying where is the promise of his coming for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation for they are for this they are willingly ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men God's going to fulfill his promise 
men today might be saying, oh, you know, mockingly and scoffingly say, oh, where's the promise of his coming? Let me just tell you, he will come at the appointed day, at the appointed hour. That's in the Father's hands. Until that day, you might want to reflect a little bit on what he's already done and the evidence of what he's already done. Did he destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, those, those five cities? He absolutely did. Did he destroy the old world by flood? He absolutely did. Did he, tell, did he promise to Israel if they departed from him that they would be carried away? Dispersed to every nation? They were. Did he also promise that they'd be brought back together as a nation in one day? And they were. Let me just tell you, it would be good for you to learn from what God has already done and what he's already told you he's going to do. Amen? Psalm chapter 14. Psalm 14, let's read it. Verses, let's read verses 1 and 2. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and did seek God. They are all gone aside and all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. You see, this is the condition of mankind. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. A fool says that. Because here's the reality, there is a God. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to save and deliver, set free, fallen mankind. But mankind in his own self-righteousness is corrupt. He does abominable works. You know, if you ever do a research uh, thing, you know, when I talk about the psychologists, I'm very serious about it. Have you ever done uh, research on these guys? Um, absolutely abominable lives. Sad. And absolutely unchristian. And, uh, you know, don't put your faith in these men. Don't put your faith in, in fallen man. Put your faith in God. Put your faith in His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. His word will never fail. His word is eternal. It's never going to end. He, he, if He promises it, He does it. You know... This is why this, these last days, as Jude, we're going back to Jude. Let's go to Jude. Back to Jude, verse 18. Um, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time that who should walk after their own ungodly lust. This is what they do. Mankind, in it, he, it's not that there's, there's a lot of men that, they understand that there's no way this came about by accident. I mean, if you take one look at creation, you realize very quickly the fallacy of the thought process where somebody thinks that an explosion randomly created intricate life, intricate design, an explosion. Because no explosions ever do that, ever. On the planet, we never, ever... You don't create detailed, finite, you know, life on multiple scales, on multiple layers uh, through an explosion. The explosions create chaos, destruction. They don't create. They're destructive. When we look at this universe, and you look at this planet, and you look at the layers of life on this planet and the intricacy of it and how beautiful detailed 
each and every part of it is, to think that this was just random, it's foolishness. Of course, they know God, but they didn't acknowledge Him as God. You see, their consciences were seared. Denying the truth will do that to you. Denying what God says will do that to you. Sear your conscience. God's speaking to you about sin. You better repent. Don't ignore when the Holy Spirit's speaking to your heart. Nudging you with that conviction. You better repent. You better quit doing that. Because that will destroy you. Thanks be to God that he warns us. Thanks be to God that he gives us opportunity to turn from our sins. Thanks be to God that he is so long-suffering. But he gives us lots of examples in the scripture to show us that that patience eventually ends. Scoffers will scoff. But sadly... All of that comes back on their own heads. Because if you leave this planet without the Lord Jesus Christ, there's literally, literally hell to pay. You understand? Don't under... Uh, don't think in your mind that you have time you should never think that you should never think that way you should live your life now for the Lord right do what he called you to do but never bank on the fact that you can say well you know I got tomorrow next week next year because you may not be around for that and if for you if, if you are not living for the Lord Jesus right now and you say, well, you know, when I get older, I'm going to give my life to the Lord. You may not get there. Stop living for yourself and start living for the Lord. Walk in the fear of the Lord. Seriously, walk in the fear of the Lord. God loves you. This is why you get the warning. This is what you get tonight. Warning from, not from Randy. Not, I'm not coming up with this. I'm coming out of this book, the Bible. And he warned you from this book, right? You all have people today that, um, you know, listen to social media and all this other stuff. And, you know, the warnings of... They even listen to the people that set the clock, the doomsday clock, right? Doomsday clock, they're setting their times and stuff like this. Listen, they don't know. They don't know. But I know who knows. God does. And God gives you warnings in his word. And he tells you what he's going to do. From the beginning, just like Brian said this morning in service, he said he tells you from, he tells you the end from the beginning. So he tells you what's going to happen all the way through. Right? So you have an obligation to listen to the Lord and to walk according to his word. Amen? And that should fill you as a Christian with great joy and great confidence. You should be like today, you should be very thankful, grateful to God that he tells you what he's going to do before he does it. This way you have an opportunity to turn from sin to him. Amen? Gotta love him. Amen? Gotta quit fighting against God. Start getting with the program. Amen? <laughs> it means put away your own things and start living for him. He's first in your life. Of course, he's gonna you're gonna have things in your life, you know. To, yeah, of course, that God does this, but our lives have to be about Him. It's got to be about what we're here for, because we're certainly not just here for us. When we go out and see beautiful things like the mountains and the rivers and streams and things like that, it's not. It's although we get to enjoy those things and say, "Wow, this is amazing." Those things that we see should remind us of the awesomeness and the power of Almighty God, the greatness and the gracefulness of His creation. His, his power and majesty and beauty and delicateness at the same time. Amazing. God's creation. And He does all of this. He shows us all of these things. They bless us, but they in turn should be something that we use 
to as a witness to other people about the goodness and mercy, kindness, and grace of God. So, tell people. Tell them the good news of the gospel about Jesus Christ. Tell them. Tell them about the how all creation witnesses to who God is. All of it. And don't walk through life with blinders on. Start looking around and seeing what God is doing. Amen? He's doing a wonderful work. Well, God bless you. I pray that uh, you were blessed tonight. We uh, went through 1 Scripture 18, and we'll take a look at 19 next week. Uh, Lord willing, we live, and we're all still here. Amen? Amen. Well, I love you, and uh, tomorrow night, uh, Monday night, we have Trevor Baker concert, 5 o'clock, and the Encouraging Word broadcast at 6 o'clock. And I pray that you can uh, tune in, and uh, looking forward to seeing you then. All right, God bless you. Have a blessed night in Jesus. Amen. Stay safe in that heat out there. God bless you.